Uh, I want to get your thoughts on this, Lewis. Uh, you've heard, of course, of Waldorf schools, have you not? Waldorf, yeah. Uh, there's there's one particular Waldorf school in Silicon Valley, which is interesting because uh, they actually have nothing high tech in the classrooms. Okay, they have pens and paper. Our uh, high school friend Mike Sustic actually sent the story to me. He went to a Waldorf school for I guess it's elementary school around here, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, computers are not allowed in the classroom at this particular, at a lot of the Waldorf schools, and in particular the Silicon Valley one. Uh, The school even frowns on children using computers at home. Many schools nationwide have rushed to supply the schools with computers. However, uh, these contrarian educators at some of these schools are saying, you know what, it's actually better to keep computers out of school. We're going to teach children a different way. Around uh, 160 Waldorf schools in the country subscribe to this idea of hands-on, physical activity, no computers, okay? Those who endorse the approach say that computers actually inhibit thinking in the classroom and that human interaction and attention spans will will benefit from having a school free of computers. The method of the Waldorf School is almost 100 years old, but of course there is more and more debate as computers become a regular part of of the curriculum in many, many schools. So the question is, let's let's assume that we, we can identify these benefits from not having computers in the classrooms. Will students be at a disadvantage, not in multiplication tables when they go to their next school after the Waldorf School, but in terms of being able to work with technology, something which in, in many jobs is required, in many colleges is required, in many high schools is required. Are students being done a disservice, not because we're na- denying any benefits can be identified from keeping computers out in elementary school, but because they will be behind in being able to interact with technology, something very important right now. Right, absolutely. I think it's uh, idiotic not to teach kids at a young age about the technology that we need to use uh, that we do use as a society. I mean, it's fine if you want to have every other class not uh, utilize the technology, but at least have one class. Have a computer class. At least have one class where the the kids are introduced to it, right? I I see your point there. I mean, Natan, what do you think? Can an argument be made why kids will not be at any disadvantage and there's a benefit to just no computer until after elementary school? I mean, probably not. Excuse me. (laughs) Um, what Lewis was saying about uh, a computer class, we all had a computer class, um, I think, in middle school and high school. And right. it seems like there's no reason why a school like the Waldorf School couldn't do that. And that way, the rest of the day would be spent on traditional modes of learning. Well, email me, david at davidpackman.com. What do you think about this one? Is there something to be said for, for no computer contact until after elementary school? Is there not? Uh, and on the subject of emails, uh, a lot of emails. Matt emailed me about the subject of grasshoppers and bugs replacing meat in the future, potentially. Matt says, I imagine there would never be a market for unprocessed insects to be consumed as meat, but as filler in certain foods or as super processed food themselves, like a grasshopper version of a Boca burger, I could see it happening. I wouldn't even be surprised or upset if McDonald's was already using bugs as beef and chicken filler for years already. I haven't eaten at McDonald's in like 13 years at this point, but I would still be, if I were, I would be upset to find out that the the beef is actually uh, part grasshopper. Would you? Yeah. You wouldn't? Uh, no. How do you, what what are you talking about, Louis? Uh, Grasshoppers are healthy. (laughs) The point is, shouldn't you be told that there's grasshoppers in your beef? Dave, if everyone were told what is in McDonald's burgers, nobody would eat them. That might be a good situation. On the topic of Rick Perry bringing up birther claims, the birth certificate Obama posted has been torn apart by forgery experts all over the net. Really? Keep drinking that Kool-Aid. Congratulations. Make sure to become a member, davidpackman.com slash membership. Time for the bonus show. See you in a few days. The David Pakman Show at davidpakman.com.